thank you all for coming to our first virtual opening. I'm Graham Wood, uh, owner of Ocean House Gallery. Um, so I just thought I would say hi and introduce uh, Dylan and Asher. Um, they each have like a little, um, they have a short presentation and talk about their work. Um, and then I had some questions for them and um, you guys are welcome to ask questions too. We'd like if you would mute yourself um, and if you have a question to just use the chat feature. Asher's wife, Lisa, is going to field all those questions and comments. So Dylan Matrano is a musician, writer, and paper cutting artist. Uh, his artwork is created from cut and layered color, colored paper. Uh, he's been living year round on Monhegan for five years. Go ahead, Dylan. Thanks, Graham. Yeah. Thank you everyone for uh, being here tonight. This is really exciting. We had been planning this show for quite some time and there was a moment when we considered not doing it or postponing it but we thought ultimately it's best to do something rather than sit around and not do anything. So I'm glad that we uh, put the show together and um, I'm excited about the way it came out. And uh, thanks again to Graham for, for having it. So uh, I'm a paper cutting artist and I think that I know a lot of the people here um, and a lot of the people I think are familiar with my work, but if you're not, um, I'd just like to do a little bit of a of a presentation around paper cutting, a little history and some artists that I've uh, admired for a while and have influenced me. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about my work as well. So I'm going to share my screen with you now. So the very first paper cuttings that I, like a lot of people can remember, would be snowflakes made in school from folding and cutting plain white paper then unfolding to create these snowflake shapes. As an art form though, the first paper cutting artist that I was really aware of was Jad Fair. He's a musician and artist who uses his own paper cuttings for his album covers. This is the cover for his 1992 album, I Like It When You Smile. This is another paper cutting by Jad Fair. Notice that in these two pieces, uh, he uses a similar folding and cutting technique that we saw earlier in the snowflakes. Paper cut art is thought to have first appeared in China during the Han Dynasty in the fourth century. After reaching West Asia and Turkey, paper cutting was established in Switzerland and Germany in the 16th century. Scherenschnitte is the German term for scissor cuts. This tradition was brought to colonial America in the 18th century by Swiss and German immigrants who settled primarily in Pennsylvania. The 19th century Danish author and illustrator Hans Christian Andersen was known for his stories, The Emperor's New Clothes, The Little Mermaid, and The Little Match Girl. He often did his own paper cuttings to accompany his stories. Henri Matisse, was an early 20th century French artist. The paper cutout was Matisse's major medium in the final decade of his life after he went, after he underwent surgery that let him, led him uh, chair and bed bound in 1941 and painting and sculptural work became physically challenging. You can see in the pictures, um, the scale of his work could be quite large, filling up entire walls of rooms. His style was quite loose with an emphasis on color and shape. Jennifer Judd McGee is a contemporary paper, paper cutting artist who lives in Mount Desert Island, Maine. She plays a lot with pattern and tapestry like work. Peter Callison is an interesting contemporary Danish artist who creates his work from a single sheet of printer paper. His negative space often interacts with the three dimensional sculptural art he pulls from the paper. Rob Ryan is a contemporary British artist who incorporates folding into his cuts and is also known for using text in his paper cuttings as well. Yulia Brodskaya is a contemporary Russian artist who does quilling, a form of paper art using rolled, looped, and glued paper. Quilling creates a three-dimensional look with lots of shading and detail. Mia Perlman is a contemporary artist from Brooklyn who does large-scale installation work. You can interact with her room-sized, site-specific installations, which incorporate light and shadows as well. Leslie Graves is an old friend who currently lives in Long Beach, California. 
Her work is tiny, layered, and detailed. I like the narrative aspect to what she does. Uh, Beatrice Coron is a prolific contemporary French artist living in New York. This is a dress that's cut from Tyvek, which is a paper-like material, which is easy to cut with a blade, but it doesn't tear easily, making it a good material to work with, especially if you're making something wearable. Jenny Lee Fowler. I love this little uh, cut leaf silhouette um, by Jenny Lee Fowler. She's a contemporary New York artist. Nikki McClure is another artist whose work I became aware of early on. She made a lot of uh, art for record covers coming out of the Pacific Northwest in the 1990s. She's known for her children's books and calendars, and uh, she's probably the one who has influenced my work the most stylistically. Now I'd like to show you some of my work. Now these first two pieces are some of the earliest work that I have images of still. Notice the simple vertical fold I used to create the mirror images. So you can actually even see the crease there right down the middle. But I just folded it once cut it, unfolded it to create the mirror image. Um, there's not a lot of detail, but there are, are bold colors and simple, simple lines. Now this is a more recent owl paper cutting. Um, you can see that I've gotten more detailed with the feathers, but and I've essentially created a black outline with the colors laid behind it. This bear took a long time because of the detail in the fur. Living on Monhegan Island, I've been very inspired by both the landscape and all the other amazing artists around me. This was fun to play with the pattern in the ropes and the pattern that the ropes make. I did a series of these all slightly different. This is a rare piece I made with orange paper as the base or outline instead of my usual black. I get a good amount of commissions. Now this is a portrait of Bono that was made for a fan of the band. These four pieces were done for a book cover. Another commission was used to make a sweatshirt for the Monhegan Museum. I have one of these that I wear almost every day. I've done many posters for events on Monhegan. Um, this one's for the library's annual fundraiser. This is the Monhegan Brewing Company, and uh, they feature different Monhegan artists on all their beer can and bottle labels. I created this uh, paper cutting of the Balmy Days boat for this label. Uh, this is a, a poster for a concert in Portland, Maine. Uh, I even made a Tyvek flower ring to propose to my wife. In 2015, I was approached to illustrate an educational children's book. It was published by Scholastic a year later. And this is an illustration from the book, Everyday Birds. Now I'd like to uh, quickly walk you through how I make paper cutting uh, or my, make my paper cuttings. The first step is to draw my image in pencil on the back of black paper. What I draw here is reversed as the final art you see will be on the other side of the paper. I don't include too much detail at this stage. With an X-Acto knife, I carefully trim around my pencil lines, leaving only the parts that I drew. Once all that is trimmed away, it looks like this. I turn it over and glue colored paper behind my black lines. Where it spills over the borders I've created, I simply trim away with my blade. I continue doing this layer after layer with different colors, laying down the colors in the front of the image first and going back and back. This piece is almost completed all the layers are set except for the last background layer, which will be the sky. Once the purple sky has been added, the piece is complete. At this point, I'll scan it for my records and either file it or frame it. Finally, a picture of my trusty assistant, Lulu, who is hard at work. And that is me. <laughs> cool. Thanks. <That's> great. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of silent clapping. <laughs> okay, I've made nice. after the host now. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I love, we just watched that uh, last week and it was great to watch it again. <laughs> um, so the other artist that is in the show, Asher Bryant, um, is an artist, author, illustrator, and educator. Uh, he grew up in Brighton, England. Um, Asher currently teaches creative writing at Rowan University um, and lives part year on Monhegan Island. Um, so Asher, would you want to start your presentation? Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much to Dylan. Well, that was like a really great presentation. Uh, beautiful work, both your own and, and other people's amazing work. I've only been doing these lino cuts for about 18 months now. Um, I'm not really sure why I started doing them. I did them as an art student, like I guess uh, everyone 
who had <laughs> kind of liberal arts education back in the 1980s. Um, but I was actually taught by a guy, I didn't know he, he was, this was who he was at the time. Uh, his name was Peter Straussfeld, and he was, he was German. I just thought of him as being a very angry German. But he, he was actually uh, in the Bauhaus, and uh, he was a refugee to England. He, he escaped from the Nazis in the late 1930s. Uh, and he was my, my first art teacher, and he did fantastic woodcuts. And the first woodcut I did was in his class, and I guess that would be uh, 1977. And he's long gone. I wish, I wish I'd known more about him at the time. But he's one of those artists, uh, but was very unenthusiastic uh, when it came to talking about himself. So I never knew. But he, 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 he hated me until I did my first woodcut. And for some reason, he, he, he liked my first woodcut. And I, after that, we sort of became more friendly. Um, so anyway, this is a lino cut. Woodcuts and lino cuts are very closely related. It's, it's almost exactly the same technique, but just using a different material. So uh, this is a little history of the form. Uh, and obviously lino cuts begin with uh, the Japanese and the Chinese um, who, you know, nobody has ever equaled these, these Edo period Japanese artists. This is Goyo Hashiguchi. Uh, I'm not sure with Asian names whether which which was his first name, but just the delicate line work um, is is just uh, mesmerizing. Especially if you you can get up close and look at the hair. This is Keisai Eisen. Again, all this amazing detail in the work and the, the beautiful hands and the incredibly delicate line work. And this is Katsushika Hokusai. This is the one you probably know. This is his, his 12 views of Mount Fuji. This is a tsunami, uh, the great wave. Um, and again, amazing. And you look at the wave and you see the mountain and then finally you see the, the fishermen in their boat, like totally overwhelmed by nature. The, other, the, the, the practice of woodcutting, from what I can find out, came to Western Europe along the Silk Road with, with many other things from the Far East. Um, you know, in the 1300s. So uh, and they, these, these early European ones, mostly Central European, then later on they were, they were British. They have their own charm, obviously nowhere near as dramatic as, as the Asian ones. Much, much simpler. They're probably using much simpler tools. Uh, he's a knight in armor. Yeah, isn't that nice? You know, they're, they're not like, wow, that's amazing. But they, they, have, they have great charm to them. Now, one of the interesting things about European woodcuts is that, you know, it was like a class system. Obviously, there was a class system in Japan and China, uh, but the Chinese and Japanese printmakers like Hokusai, they were the artists. They did their own cutting. They designed the prints, they cut the prints, they registered the prints, and, and they printed them. Uh, most likely, they had assistants, but they were in charge right the way through. In Western Europe, the artists designed, made the design, and then the sort of journeyman printmaker would cut the block based on the artist's design. And so, you know, we know some of the names of the, uh, the great printmakers of the medieval European era, but not the people that actually cut the blocks. And, and this carried on right through into the period of engraving, right through to the Victorian era. This is Albrecht Dürer, uh, the four horsemen of the uh, 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 apocalypse. I guess one of them is, is uh, called COVID-19. Now Dürer was uh, well known because he was one of the few artists that actually cut his own blocks. Um, and he, he was like, not just a fantastic artist, but also a fantastic printmaker. So yeah, it wasn't, it was unusual for the artist and the printmaker to be the same person. This is Randolph Caldicott, after whom the uh, Caldicott Award for children's books is named, the, the big uh, literary award in the United States. The American Library Association gives it out every year for uh, uh, the best picture book of the year. And I, I guess I'm just including him because well, you know, this is the idea of contemporary illustration and lino 